Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. And what I want to do now is I want to talk about the major uh, changes on the ECG that we're looking at uh, before we even look at a 12 lead ECG. So I've just kind of hand drawn, this is real low, low fidelity videos, but I've kind of hand drawn a normal um, P Q R S T complex. And the most important area when it comes to identifying um, uh, what's known as a STEMI or a, a ST elevation myocardial infarction. That's really one of the big things that we're looking at, particularly in the pre-hospital environment on somebody who is experiencing signs and symptoms of suggesting uh, a, 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 what's known as an acute coronary syndrome or some sort of acute occlusive disorder involving the coronary arteries compromising perfusion to a certain area of the heart. Um, STEMI tends to be the most um, worrisome manifestation of an acute coronary syndrome, so that's what we're going to start our focus on. So we have your normal PQRST complex, and the area that is of most importance or most concern to us when examining for evidence of an ACS or an acute coronary syndrome um, is going to be this area right here, okay, where the you've got your QR, where your S wave comes back to baseline, and then you go back to your isoelectric line, and then you have your, your T wave signifying ventricular repolarization. Um, this is known as the J point, and that's where we start our basic analysis if we're looking for ST segment abnormalities because the J point is where our S wave okay terminates and we transition into the T wave and so this is also known as the ST segment okay the J point um, and so if you look at the J point it does kind of resemble a J right just like that and what we should normally see, so this is an example of a normal PQRST complex, we should normally see the, um, the S wave go down and then come back to baseline, okay? You have your isoelectric line, you come back to baseline, and then you have the T wave, okay? When that does not happen, okay, so that J point, if you imagine that that's a J and that this is a baseline here, that J point can either um, go below the baseline, okay, or the J point uh, can terminate kind of above the baseline, okay. If we have a below the baseline, okay, so uh, this here is an example of your J point. So if we draw the J here, look, look what we see here. The J baselines out or terminates down here, okay, and this is actually your isoelectric line right up here, right? This is your baseline. So if you draw a line through there, you can clearly see that this uh, is well below that baseline. It is what we call depressed, okay? It is depressed, okay? And you can even see that the T wave here is inverted, okay? It's in the opposite direction of what we would normally anticipate the T wave to be. This is a phenomenon known as ST depression. All right, ST segment depression, and you can even say T wave inversion here. The T waves are inverted, they're in the opposite direction. Okay, ST depression or T wave inversion is indicative in many cases of ischemia. So this is normal. This is an area of the heart that may be potentially ischemic, or it may point to um, a possible posterior wall STEMI if we see this in certain leads, okay? So this is a characteristic of an, another uh, acute coronary syndrome known as a N-STEMI, okay? A non-ST elevation myocardial infarction slash USA unstable angina, okay? So uh, under the umbrella of acute coronary syndromes, you have your STEMIs and then you have your in STEMIs slash USAs fall under that umbrella. This is uh, more often 
indicative of an NSTEMI. Um, if someone's having a very early, early STEMI, okay, very early ST elevation myocardial infarction, you may see these changes occur before you have the classic changes associated with the STEMI. Okay, so let's move on down um, to our next PQRST complex. So if you look at your J point, you can clearly see that the J point is elevated, okay, right here, is elevated well above the baseline. You see that there? So the T wave here is, is in essence kind of blended into the QRS, right? And that the, um, the S wave terminates well above instead of below or at the baseline at the isoelectric line. And so this is a phenomenon known as ST segment elevation, all right? And this is a classic indicator for injury. Okay, we have active injury occurring. So up here, this indicates ischemia and potentially injury in some cases, whereas the ST segment elevation um, often indicates ongoing active injury to the myocardium. Um, hence the term STEMI, ST elevation myocardial infarction. That is a heart attack, um, an infarction. Um, uh, d d infarct means, you know, to die. Um, that is a, an infarction that is damage death to the heart that is causing noticeable um, ST elevation, ST changes on the uh, ECG. <clears throat> and then finally, the last thing that we may see is over here. So if you notice on um, all three of these, the Q wave, right, that's the first part of the QRS complex, that first negative deflection, the Q wave tends to be rather modest in size. A very large Q wave, a Q wave that's, that's larger than about half of the, the total length of the, the, the QRS complex is what's known as a pathological a pathological Q wave. So a pathological Q wave is often associated with the STEMI, but what pathological Q waves point to is they actually uh, point to uh, dead, dead or infarcted, infarcted tissue. Okay, so this is damaged, this is dying, and this is dead. Okay, so when somebody recovers from having a STEMI, okay, the ST segment elevation may go away, but because they have some dead tissue, the Q waves tend to stay forever. So the Q wave may or may not indicate an acute process. It's hard to tell. If you do not have an old 12 lead ECG, it, you can't um, really make a solid diagnosis based on the presence of Q waves alone because these tend to stay with you forever once you've had a significant STEMI. Um, so when you uh, do a 12 lead on somebody who's having signs and symptoms suggesting an acute coronary syndrome and all you see are Q waves, you don't know if this is a new or old phenomena. And in that case, um, it probably is best to err on the side of this may be a new phenomenon occurring. Um, whereas these other changes tend to be more acute <clears throat> and they tend to um, resolve in some cases. Now, there are some drugs such as digoxin, and somebody goes on digoxin or lenoxin uh, for AFib or congestive heart failure, um, uh, digoxin can cause uh, ST segment depression, and that won't go away while they're on the digoxin, so that very well may be a chronic thing. So um, when I talk about these things, there are all kinds of exceptions associated with them as well, even though I'm focusing more on the high yield concepts. Okay, so just to review, um, when we look at the 12 lead, uh, we're looking for evidence of an acute coronary syndrome, okay? And we're trying to marry this evidence with uh, clin our clinical exam. Um, the important area is the J point, the ST segment and we look for, is the J point normal? Does it return to baseline? As we see here, is it below the baseline and causing ST segment depression which is indicative of ischemia? Is it above the baseline 
um, what we call ST elevation indicative of injury, or do we have the presence of pathological Q waves which are indicative of infarction or dead tissue? Um, what are, uh, what are our um, thresholds? Our thresholds are fairly varied and can change depending on other underlying problems such as a bundle bro branch blocks make this very difficult. Bundle branch blocks are um, a big confounder when it comes to the 12 EDCG. But in general, if you um, have this more isolated depression elevation in general, we say that in a single lead, one single lead, um, greater than two millimeters of ST segment elevation is indicative of a STEMI. <clears throat> now, if you have ST elevation in more than one lead, um, if you have it in what were known as contiguous leads, and we'll talk about what contiguous leads are here in the next video, but if you have greater than one millimeter of ST elevation in two or more contiguous leads, that is diagnostic of uh, a STEMI, whereas greater than two millimeters of ST segment elevation in a single lead is indicative of ST segment elevation in the absence of other confounding um, anomalies that can make the diagnosis uh, of an acute coronary syndrome based on 12 lead uh, evidence uh, a bit more difficult. Okay guys, hopefully that makes sense and we'll see you in the next video.